So we are going to discuss, as I previously mentioned in the Washington NCP uh, presentation, a bit more in depth on how uh, first as a CSP perspective and after we can, uh, I, I will hand over to Keriv and Ryan uh, probably. Um, to discuss how we can use WASH assessment to identify priority uh, zones to intervene and also to cost uh, what we are trying to do, the, the WASH investment, so that we can uh, mobilize uh, partners, the WASH sector as a whole, and donors uh, to invest in WASH in cholera hotspots. So, um, maybe first, as uh, just to to re to recap or reiterate the CSP perspective, as a technical assistant, I would say to the different uh, governments, we want to help uh, first design those uh, uh, national uh, cholera plans, and then mobilize wash sectors and uh, resources. Uh, to, to, to operationalize wash investment in those hotspots. So what, what I've tried to, to set here is an idea of the different elements that we need to, to be able to do that. So maybe we need to identify priority areas. So there are already uh, developed methods uh, to identify those areas, the cholera hotspots. However, um, we may need uh, among those hotspots to identify subgroups of hotspots or maybe to phase uh, the, the investments uh, between different uh, uh, priority groups. And then we can, we can uh, later on uh, discuss how we can do this. So for this, to, to, to be able to prioritize and cost, maybe we need information on the uh, the level of water sanitation services that are existing in these different areas. We need to define the type of intervention that we want to support and associated costs. And we may need to uh, use this uh, results to, to be able to mobilize uh, funding and uh, actors uh, to invest in the wash sector in those areas that we see uh, priority. So most of you have probably already heard of uh, the methodology to identify cholera hotspots. So those are methodology that are based mainly on epidemiological uh, data analysis that would allow to identify those areas that are regularly affected. Um, however, when we uh, want to invest, to, to think of the wash investment that needs to be made in those cholera hotspots, it might be a huge amount, or, uh, even if it's already uh, in a subset uh, of the district of the, at the national level. So the, 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 the proposition would probably be at some point uh, to prioritize between the hotspots, maybe through um, a kind of vulnerability analysis. And uh, we, we could prioritize those hotspots maybe that are uh, less served. So no tools yet have been uh, developed to do that. Uh, but I, what I want to present you today is like the global process or the idea uh, that uh, could be uh, used to prioritize those hotspots, but all the methodology hasn't been uh, yet agreed or discussed. So it's just a, a kind of workflow and, and then all the details can be discussed at a later stage. So maybe the first step would still be to use uh, the hotspot uh, identification. And then the second step would be in those hotspots identified where, uh, which, hotspots are priority and maybe um, not to select only a subset, but maybe to phase uh, 
for the next five years, maybe those uh, group of high priority may be targeted. And in the next five years, uh, another group of, um, of uh, hotspots. So for this, we, we would need to gather uh, wash data to see the, uh, the different level of uh, access to water sanitation uh, services, then to define a methodology uh, to assess the wash vulnerability based on all those uh, uh, criteria, maybe a scoring system, and to we could imagine ranking hotspots uh, depending on their uh, relative uh, wash uh, vulnerability score. So this this is an example of how we could do this. So we could use a number of uh, indicators, and based on the service level, we would have a, a score attributed to that uh, to that level of service, and then the the total score would allow. Uh, this is just a, a simulated uh, example. Right? It's not uh, uh, the real uh, wash uh, service data that are presented here. Um, we would be able to uh, probably uh, select uh, the number uh, a number of priority hotspots, maybe for the uh, first phase and maybe for the second phase. So the idea really here is to, to think ahead uh, that the total amount of wash investment in, uh, in all cholera hotspots may be a bit big to, to, to do fundraising. And by presenting it in phases, we might be more successful. Uh, so uh, uh, an example of um, how we could prioritize, uh, sorry, uh, hotspot can be on the level of vulnerability. We could also use uh, the, the, an idea of the investment that, that needs to be made in those hotspots. So we could use to estimate the, the cost of those wash investments, um, a kind of simple uh, methodology using tools that already exist. For example, the SDG uh, cost calculator, but it can be any other costing methodology that could transform as a magic formula, the different levels of service into, once we've defined the target, into cost of reaching this target. So here, uh, I'm just presenting a simulated uh, also a, a result table where we would see per district with the magic formula transforming the level of service at baseline, knowing the target that we want to reach uh, into a cost. So we would have, for example, the total cost for the NCP, we would have cost for each of the hotspots. So if we select a group of hotspots, we can have a, uh, uh, the amount for the group of hotspots. And we could have, uh, for example, the cost of different type of activities. For example, the cost of ending defecation in those areas, the cost of uh, reaching universal uh, basic uh, uh, services for water, sanitation, and hygiene, for example, or in total, and maybe for, to some extent, the cost of additional, reaching additional level of uh, water and sanitation services, such as uh, the safely managed level, for example. The idea is that, as I was saying, we can use, uh, oh, sorry, um, this also to be able to estimate the amount needed for priority group one, priority group two, and based on the amount of uh, funding that we may be able to, to raise, um, we would be able to start uh, the, the, the operation process. Um, so this is how we come now to wash assessment. This data is usually not easily accessible, and we discussed this this morning, uh, is not usually easily accessible at the district level. So we would need uh, uh, strategies to collect this data or to gather this data or to estimate this data. So the, the, the main issues that we face uh, regarding this is, is also the cost and time needed for this data collection. So 
we can explore different uh, possibilities of uh, collecting this data or modeling or estimating this data from, uh, I think we already mentioned, uh, existing, uh, for example, GMP data. Uh, or uh, we could, if data is not uh, available yet, uh, go to the field and find some ways to, to collect uh, data um, to, to have those uh, wash service estimates. So I don't know if there are uh, any question before I hand over to Pierre that will uh, also present some uh, concrete examples of what has been done. Good afternoon, colleagues. Um, my name is, uh, is Pierre Yves uh, from, from UNICEF, and I'll, I'll present uh, very briefly something we prepared with uh, Ryan Tracer from uh, CDC. Uh, it is very linked to, to what Christoph just presented, indeed, and actually, I had a chance to talk to Christoph uh, last week. He presented what he just uh, showed today, and, and I suggested that I come to an update with an update of something we presented a year and a half ago. Uh, a work we've been working, something we've been working on with CDC, on a costing project uh, that originally came out as a request from a GTFCC members, and. It is a UNICEF-led project funded by CDC, and, and the idea was to be able to provide cost estimates uh, of uh, wash needs in cholera hotspots. Uh, it, it was planned with uh, two phases, one pilot in, in DRC in Goma, as uh, that was done in 2019, and it was supposed to be followed by uh, another pilot in a more rural setting. Uh, that never happened due to COVID. Uh, so um, I'll present just to it's really some food for thought. And, and the idea for me today by presenting is really to get the opportunity to talk with you over the next two days, and especially thinking of uh, colleagues from uh, national governments to get your views on where we are, where we sit with these costing ideas, and to uh, further develop. Uh, what I will do is I quickly um, present um, uh, of course, what we did in Goma, but also quickly show what was uh, supported by GTFTC uh, in the past. We had four WASH studies commissioned by GTFTC and, and done by a consultant, Paul Cotavos, uh, Zambia, Zimbabwe, South Sudan, and Ethiopia. Um, and when we looked at it with Ryan, we, we thought it, it'd be interesting to highlight uh, a few uh, key points that lead to different ways of costing different methodologies for costing. Uh, starting with Zimbabwe, what was the approach? Uh, we had a hotspot mapping and ranking at country level, but the decision was done to focus on Harare as a major hotspot. Uh, with a specific goal, no heartbreak in Harare and less than 114 cases a year. And the result, I'll be very short, I will not go in deep in, in the study, but the, the result is really to the way they have been working is to define some packages of intervention, uh, looking at local color roadmaps, looking at types of intervention that would be relevant for cholera intervention. So here we are not speaking about WASH global intervention, but really looking at targeted type of intervention for cholera. And, and one specificity of Zimbabwe, They've also been working on full, medium, and small scale of for the, everything, every package. So you could define something as a short term with a small scale and, and longer term as a full uh, scale. Uh, the study ended up with a cost of uh, 10 million dollars uh, over uh, five years. Um, moving on to South Sudan, uh, using a uh, hotspot mapping done by WHO, uh, the study, uh, same idea coming with packages of interventions that are uh, specific to cholera and not only uh, specific to WASH. As one specificity from South Sudan compared to Arari is the existence of IDPs. So this is another type of package. In Arari, it was much more peri-urban uh, areas. Uh, in, in South Sudan, uh, we ended up with a cost of uh, $26 million. Ethiopia is uh, the last study I'll present just to mention uh, we speak here about 15 millions of people, uh, which is a, a lot, of course. Uh, and one specificity of the different packages 
shown here is one uh, around washing OCV. Um, we ended up with a huge amount, 220 million uh, over five years, uh, which is, of course, uh, linked to the size of the uh, targeted population. We speak about 15 million people in, in, in this study. So these three studies were done uh, from uh, supported by GTFCC. And just to, to compare quickly, a budget population and cost per beneficiary. So uh, we end up uh, with a cost per beneficiary moving from nine to uh, roughly 21, 22 dollars per uh, habitant. Now, moving on from, from this approach to other potential approach. Uh, and, and here, link with what Christoph presented is, is very clear. Uh, one possibility is, is to cost per individual. Uh, that's what Christoph presented. It's the SDG costing tool. It's, it's one way of, of looking at it. Another way of, of looking at costing is looking at costing per package. That is what was proposed uh, with the GTFCC studies I, I just presented, uh, looking at specific wash package for a cholera hotspot. Finally, there is another uh, possibility, or maybe just on package of intervention, just to be sure that we link it very much to context of transmission. That's really the way to, to see packages, how you can define some packages for uh, contaminations that can happen in uh, healthcare facilities, you can have one in uh, household level, you can have different packages. And third, package, third option is to look for costing based on infrastructure projects. And this is relying on data available from existing or planned uh, projects in, in countries. And it can be used on its own or it can be used as an additional layer to any other strategy from the first or second. Uh, finally, it might be more useful, the third one, in urban areas where we've got more data and where it's also, uh, it might be more complicated to only rely on either SDG type of approach or either only on package approach. So a few additional considerations before I explain where we are today. Uh, first, um, Hotspot, as they are defined yet, uh, are usually geographic quite large and often too large uh, for wash actors to be able to uh, cost infrastructure at a local level. Uh, one of the consequences is the risk to end up with unrealistic uh, eye figures, so we need some additional prioritization. One option is, is to look at differences between rural and urban. For urban, uh, we can look at prioritization based on epidemiological knowledge. And here I would speak about local knowledge. We often have some good knowledge, mostly in urban areas, because you've got a bit less of a turnover of staff and you also have a more documented uh, information regarding hotspots. So based on, on what was done in the countries I presented, we think that we may be able to make some priorities in urban areas in a better way than we could do in a rural hotspot. Maybe an idea for urban hotspot, and I'll come back to that. It, it's used kind of mixed uh, costing approach, uh, one using wash packages, and one using cost per inf from infrastructure. <laughs> for rural hotspot, uh, it's a bit different. It, it, it's often we see a need for more classic wash interventions um, and maybe a costing uh, per individual can be used or maybe we have enough information based on, 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 on studies that were done on development plans or a UNICEF data to, to be able to cost in, in rural areas. Uh, last comment, which is linked to something we discussed this morning is the importance of, uh, if we consider costing process, to be sure that it is fully embedded in any NCP process, but also to link with national strategy for access to water supply and sanitation and hygiene. 
Um, I won't go through this one just to, 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 to show, to highlight a bit the, the two main options we have. And, and, and Chris uh, mentioned it during his presentation. Either we look at, at something very global, uh, something for strategic purposes and where maybe a kind of SDG tool approach costing per individual might give high figures, but give you some figures. Or we look at something a bit more operational as part of an NCP process where we try to, to dig in a bit more to get more precise figures. Um, where for what? And, and that's my last slide. Uh, where are we today? Uh, in a reflection uh, with, with CDC, we, we think a, a good way for what is really to look uh, at uh, differentiating between urban and rural and, and, and to see uh, what would be the options in costing with the, with the two. Um, we really think that we need to have a country-led approach as uh, so that we do not want to get uh, a tool that will be defined at top level to be used in countries. We think that it, it will be different between countries. So the idea for us would be probably to, to, to pilot this, this methodology. We speak more of a methodology rather than a tool to get someone in a country uh, for quite a long-term period, six months maybe, uh, or to, to support, to be part of the NCP process, to help us uh, to, to define what would be specific in, in the costing, in the hotspot. I'll just mention here was baseline, but Tom will speak about it tomorrow as an additional tool, an additional way of looking at how we can base our approach to, 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 to costing. Uh, so that's just what we wanted to present. And, and the idea is really one more time just to discuss with you. Idea would be, if we can identify a country if where we would have GTFCC partners interested to work with us on accompanying a national government with a consultant embedded in, in the national uh, structures to support this costing approach, uh, that would rely on the three options I explained, but that would also rely on GTFCC partners to provide information in countries on specific projects, potentially in country, working to cost some specific uh, projects that may be identified along the process. Uh, that's it for me. I'll just uh, food for thought and very happy to, to further discuss with you in the coming two days. Thank you very much.